the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. From Gaslit to Goddess to Wana Evert's powerful journey of healing and self-discovery in episode 122. Boundaries is one of the first things that I touch on um, with all of my clients. Um, Boundaries are necessary to find love for ourselves because that's where it says, I'm, I refuse to be treated a certain way. I demand to be respected in, in whatever area this is, in whatever way this is. And it allows us to open or use our voice and stand up for ourselves. This is the way I'm going to be treated or I will not be in your life. Um, so it's very, very important. It's one of the first things I teach. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello, and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, the space where stories of strength, resilience, and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Rose Davidson, and I am honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we have a very special episode tailored just for you. Whether you're driving, sipping a cup of tea, or simply taking a moment for yourself, I want you to know that you are in a safe space. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast, it's a community, it's a beacon of hope and a reminder that you are never alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share a story that resonates with the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and the unwavering strength that lies within each of us. So settle in. Take a deep breath and let the healing journey begin. But before we dive into today's inspiring conversation, just a quick reminder, if you find our episodes valuable, consider consider supporting us by subscribing, sharing and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach more hearts and spread the message of healing. Today, it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Tawanda Evert. And Tawanda's going to be discussing with us um, the experience of um, being gaslit and how we can change that around and become a goddess. Now, Tawanda uh, has has had a great, uh, not a great journey, but her journey has been marked by resilience and self-discovery. She was born prematurely in 1975 and she faced life-threatening circumstances alongside her mother. Despite struggles with a charismatic but dark biological father, Tawanda confronted her past at 15, only to be abandoned by most of her family. She navigated the New York City group home system. She found solace in motherhood at 18, and although influenced by insecurity and societal pressures, she endured a tumultuous marriage and debilitating car accident in 2004, but she did persevere. In 2020, Tawanda faced a malevolent fourth grade teacher who pushed her to despair, leading to a suicide attempt. However, a spiritual connection with her mother brought hope and psychic gifts. Despite loss and estrangement from her children, Tawanda found strength through her ancestral lineage. She now inspires others to embrace authenticity and boldly shares her story with the world. From this darkness, Black Butterfly Goddess emerged as a beacon of light offering unconditional love and support to those in need. Tawanda, welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. I love your mission. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, um, you know, you, in the introduction, I shared some of your story, but, you know, tell, tell us a little bit um, about how you, you know, have come to be, how you are at this present moment um after my suicide uh, attempt um 
things were pretty dark for a while. It felt like I was losing everything and everyone that I actually loved. Um, and my even I was even estranged from my children for um, almost two years. Um, there's a little bit of healing even happening there right now. So I, I, I feel great about that. And I've been able to see my grandchildren. Um, but in, in 2022, um, I thought I had chosen better as, as someone who was, um, essayed by her, her natural father and, um, to the point of being impregnated, um, I made a lot of terrible decisions in regards to men because, you know, I, how do you heal that in, in 1993, um, 1992, how do you heal that? We had the encyclopedia Britannica. We, that was it. You know, we did not have, um, all of the, the resources that we have now. And so I chose terrible partners. Um, all of them were abusive and, um, I thought I chose better. The fourth grade teacher, I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, this is going to be great. He works with children. So, you know, he can't be abusive, right? Because he works with children every day. And he would belittle me daily. He would find any and everything to belittle me about. I was never good enough. And 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 he had that triangulation thing going between me and his, his child's natural mother. Um, but I didn't know anything about trauma bonds or triangulation or anything like that. Um, I thought something was wrong with me. Um, and he even went to the point, I remember I was on my knees begging him to love me one night, just begging him, just see me, see me for who I am today. And, um, he said, maybe your father wanted to be with you seven days a week, but I don't. And walked over me as if I were a pile of dog poo on the street. And um, so I'm still trying to, you know, navigate. Am I losing my mind? What's going on? Like, how is all of this happening? I thought I chose better. Something has to be wrong with me. Something has to be wrong with me. I enrolled in counseling. Um, I'm, I'm doing all of this. And then my brother-in-law passes and my sister, you know, I lived in Atlanta at the time. My sister lives in Washington, DC. And so of course I came to be beside my sister to support her. And he's one of those people who can't be alone for one night. And so I, I was accused of, you know, cheating while I'm up here, you know, trying to be that beacon of hope and, and that strength for my sister, who I've only seen cry one time in our life. And that was when my mom transitioned. And so to see her so fragile, you know, I had to be the strong one. So I never got to mourn my brother-in-law. So when I, you know, boarded the plane to go home and, and, you know, I texted my best friend and I'm telling her we're on the runway. I'll text you when I land. And she says, Hey, why don't you go to your house tonight? And, you know, just, just go to your house. And I had this feeling in the pit of my stomach that it was going to be a long night, but I had already told them to pick me up. I didn't want to go through the, oh, you're cheating because you're at your house. Um, so I get in the car and I'm all cheerful. And I'm like, you know, I forgot that when I, when I worked for White House appointees in DC, I never wanted to go see the sites. I, I, you know, those buildings and things, I wanted to get away from them. Um, but it would be really great to take your son because he has a brilliant son. I said, it would be really great to take him on a trip there, you know, so he can go see all the museums and things. And the car got cold and I'm like, oh my God, what, what could I have possibly said wrong? And I'm going over this statement in my head the whole way home. It's quiet. And we get to the house. He kind of pushes me away when I go to hug him and I go take a shower and come sit down. And he goes, I'm not going anywhere where you traipsed around with some other man. And, and I was caught off guard and I'm like, 
traipsed. I I was married to my children's father, and and I I said I never went to these places. Like I I you know, and I'm literally puzzled. Something. I now know what that something was, which was my mother, who's always on my right side, said, put your phone in your pocket and hit record in my robe pocket. And I did just that. And the whole time he's just talking and talking and belittling and belittling. And finally, my whole body goes numb. And I stood up and I went and laid in the bed, but the phone was still recording. But my body is numb. And I went to sleep. Um, I took, I, I have epilepsy, so I have to take medicine to go to sleep. And I took one, I had just filled it. And the next morning I get up, phone's still recording. Um, I got a cup of coffee and he came in the room and started up again. And that numb feeling washed over me again. And I walked in, uh, over to the dresser and took 30 Ambien, followed by coffee and vinegar. I wanted them to melt as fast as possible. And he goes, great, now I have to go to the store and get you syrup of Ipecac, I guess, to induce, you know, for it to come up. Because, of course, you know, I can't pass away because then there's questions from him, you know, on his side. And I, I left the house and I walked and I got sleepy and I, I laid down in the woods and went to sleep. And um, I remember going to the ancestral plane. I remember my mother telling me, you have to go back. I remember pleading with her to allow me to stay. I was tired. I was nobody. I was purposeless. I was worthless. And she says, no. You have a purpose and your purpose begins now. And she takes her hands and pushes me by my chest back into the 3D realm. And my first thought, and I know, you know, it, I don't think this way now, but my first thought was like, wow, you couldn't even do that right. That's how worthless you are. And um, of course, counseling and, you know, I went through all of all of the the things, but I had an RTT hypnotherapy session and that's where life changed. And um, my mother came through that session and my mother transitioned at 59 and she kind of places her hands on my shoulders and it's all recorded. And she says, I didn't get to finish. You know, you're already psychic, but I am transferring my gifts to you. You're going to finish. And at that point, you know, I moved back to D.C. to help my sister. Um, but when I got into my apartment, my mother's voice, her voice was so loud, I couldn't even sleep. And she had me scripting and writing and, you know, sitting outside all night, just scripting and writing. And finally, um, I tell my family I'm a psychic. I'm not hiding my gifts anymore. Mom was a psychic. You guys didn't know because there's such a big gap in, in our ages. And I'm going to be who I am because I am tired of hiding who I am to make all of you happy while all of you live your best life. And I'm screaming from inside. And in February, my mother says, it's time to use your voice. And I, I did my first broadcast in February and I announced to the world that I am a psychic. And I believe it was March or April, uh, a publisher that I followed put out a call for an anthology book. But one of the uh, requirements was that you had to be a business owner and have a website by that Monday Black Butterfly Goddess was up and running. And what do I do? I am a bridge between the spiritual and the material realm. I bring people peace and solace by, um, I do readings, um, only Oracle, not tarot. But I also 
am a spiritual guide and have a kind of a coaching program where women like I, women, women like me can come and feel safe and they can heal their trauma. And that's what Black Butterfly Goddess is about. It's about helping women like me. Wonderful. It's a quite a quite a journey to wonder. I just wanted to know, you know, through your journey, through your learnings, um, how important are boundaries um, you know, in, in finding the love for ourselves and, and the love for others? I that's boundaries is one of the first things that I touch on um with all of my clients. Um boundaries are necessary to find love for ourselves because that's where it says I'm I refuse to be treated a certain way. I demand to be respected in in whatever area this is, in whatever way this is, and it allows us to open or use our voice and stand up for ourselves. This is the way I'm going to be treated or I will not be in your life. Um so it's very very important. It's one of the first things I teach. I guess, you know, following on from, you know, setting those boundaries with ourselves and setting your boundaries with others so that we learn how to love um, ourselves and others, how can we accept our purpose and use our purpose authentic authentically? I have a, I, I did a quote, um, I said a quote on a podcast um, a few months back and I said, oftentimes our pain is our purpose. And um, everything that I was taught that is ugly and should be hidden are the things that make me beautiful and successful now. All of my scars internally, externally, I share them with the world now. And people want to hear about them and people want to see them because it makes me authentic. And people need authenticity right now. They don't need perfection perfection it, it's it's not going to heal anyone people need to see oh i went through that i've been through that so that they can heal truly heal um because for me going to a doctor's office every week and repeating the same thing over and over again for 5 years did nothing it wasn't until I fully accepted myself, I merged what is perceived to be bad and what is perceived to be good and accepted my whole self. And once I accepted my whole self, I started teaching people how to accept their whole selves. So it, it, it's, it's quite important. It's quite important to merge those pieces of yourself. It is. And, you know, we can't show up for others if we don't show up for ourselves. And it's really important that that we know who we are so that we can share our life lessons with others and and hopefully, um, you know, give them some guidance and, and some strategies to move forward, if, especially if they've yes. gone through a traumatic life. Yes, very much so. Very much so. <laughs> How can we step into this power, you know, unapologetically, you know, and, and not apologize for who we are and, and what what we um what we are, how we are, you know, without apology. Um that's where boundaries come in. Um I refuse to allow anything or anyone to make me feel bad for who I am or what I do. Um, I am unapologetic about who I am and what I do. My spine stands straight when I need to. My head goes up and I, I just, I don't accept anything less than what I know I deserve. And the problem is when we don't love ourselves, we are so desperate for someone to love and see and accept us. My whole life, I just wanted somebody to say, I see you. Less than 10 letters, I see you. And no one ever said it. Mm -hmm. And so now I see me. 
I look in the mirror and I see me and I love myself, whether I'm, you know, thin or, or a little bit like I've gained weight because I had back surgery. I, I, I still love myself. It doesn't matter what I am. I still love myself and no one, no one, nothing and no one can take that away. But I also love others just as they are for who they are in that moment. Now, it doesn't mean I have to accept you in my life. I love you as you are. Doesn't mean I need to be around you, though. If 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 you can't um, be positive and, you know, things like gossip. I don't I don't have friends who gossip anymore. Um, things like that. If you can't be a positive person who is reaching out to help others, then I I can't be around you. Mm. Yeah, I, that, that's quite true. Um, you know, you, I've been through a situation. I, I was going to counselling, and one of the, one of the things that I was to do was write positive affirmations on the wall. Yes, and partner or my husband. Um, didn't like me writing those affirmations and he made me tear them down. And he just said to me, you know, I don't want that crap on my walls. And I thought, wow, you know, here I am trying to to find who I am, trying to, you know, be find the, some positive aspects in my life. And, mm-hmm. you know, he was just tearing me down and and it, it, it was not a nice feeling at all. And so I understand where, you know, where women who are living uh, in an abusive relationship find yes. that they can't um, manifest that that beautiful side of themselves without being torn down yes yes it's it's definitely like he didn't want me to go to the gym I couldn't go on family vacations you know anything that would have um made me feel good yeah, Anything I, I, that would have brought light to my life. Yeah, I've been there, done that. Um, and it, it's it's quite difficult, you know, to find the courage to leave that type of relationship when when you don't realise that you are living in an abusive relationship. I, I've been married for over 30 years. I didn't mm-hmm. realise until this year that the relationship that I was living in was an abusive one um, it, because I just lived with it. It was just something that happened and and I realized that I was worth more than what I was receiving and yes and and you know it took me 30 odd years to realize that this is the top of relationship that I didn't want anymore and yes. so yeah so now I'm trying to step into my own power and you know and it, but it's hard for you know to, for others to do that because sometimes they don't see that they are living in an abusive relationship they just yes. think that what life is it took my counselor over a year to convince me that w- what I was in was domestic abuse um, because I've experienced physical domestic abuse before. And I'm like, but he never hit me. And her response was, what you went through is what they take prisoners of war through. She said that psychological abuse is far worse than physical because and and it's not to to downplay physical that's that's horrible in itself she said but the scars heal from physical this is much harder to heal when they tear down you psychologically oh yeah absolutely i i'm i'm i i understand that totally to want to yes. um you know we where can people, um, you know, find out a little bit more about you? I mean, you're on, uh, you've got a website. It's the Black Butterfly Goddess. You've got yes. Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok. You have a YouTube channel and you're on LinkedIn. But what can they find in all of those social media um, areas that you, that you are actually, you know, poking your face at? Um, so TikTok is mostly the psychic, uh, portion of my business. Um, I, I do psychic lives mostly all night and, um, blackbutterflygoddess.com is where they can find information about my 
I don't like to say coaching because I feel like coaching is overused now. Um, I call it my spiritual guidance, intuitive illumination, spiritual guidance program, um, and where they can book, you know, time with me to see if they would like to work with me. Um, I have a number of clients. I am so proud of them. So proud of the steps that they're making. Um, I have a young lady who just joined whose journey is very much like mine and, and she is like ready to fight. And um, I, I just love that they feel that I bring them. I'm teaching them how to love themselves. I did a reading yesterday for a woman i i call her mama because she's she always checks on me and makes sure i eat and things like that and um she said you are teaching me how to love myself and that hit hard because it's like wow me and um i've received emails from people that said i had the pills in my hand and you popped up on a podcast and I'm going to live now. I put the pills back. And it makes me emotional because it's like, wow, me? I I do that? And so um, I am exceptionally proud of myself. My eldest child is back in my life. Um, I asked her, what made you start talking to me again? And her first answer was, when you had the opportunity to see the kids, you didn't pay attention to anyone else but the kids. And I said, but what made you start talking to me again? And she said, I see something very different. You're not mom from, you know, 15 years ago. Um, so there's healing happening with, you know, my children and I. It's very, very slow with the younger two, but there's still just a glimmer. And that's all I need is that glimmer. And I'm just going to continue to be me, continue to show people unconditional love. I, I hold space for people when they come into the psychic lives and they're like, you know, I'm sad. I'm going through this. And we light candles. We stop the music. We get quiet. Everybody sends them love and light. Um, it's what I do. And I tell people on TikTok, I'm not like any other psychic. I built my psychic life so people feel seen, heard, loved, and understood. That's very important that we all have those things in our life. Tawana, it's yes. been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Um, Thank you. Um, good good luck with your, your ongoing healing journey. I'm sure it will be magnificent um, and you'll end up in the place that you want to be. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast. Mm -hmm.